So let's try and understand the group by a bit more detail and see what if we manually wanted to replicate some of the group by features, how would we do this? So if we didn't have link feature in C sharp, how would we do this where we have a bunch of students and what we want to do is we want to group them by their class, such as math, science, history, and then maybe get a count and the key value. So what are they being grouped by? So here I've tried to replicate the group by, so you can see you've got your students here and the subjects that they are in. And what we want to do is we just want to put them in their class group over here. So they're separated by the subject they are doing. So what you do is and you could create a dictionary and this dictionary has a key, which is in string and then values are list of students. And we'll call this variable groups. So we'll create a new instance of this. And then what we're going to do is we are going through and loop through our students. So that's the students we created here. So that's the students variable there. And when we are looping through them, what we'll do is we'll store this current students class as the key in this variable. So the variable is called key. And then what we're going to check is if the groups, so the groups here is the dictionary variable we created. And we're going to check if it contains the key. So the key is the class of the current student. So for example, Ali is the first student. And we are going to check if the class is math. If it already exists, then that's fine. We won't do anything. But if it doesn't, then what we'll do is we'll create that key and initiate a new list there. So this here, it's just the if condition within these two brackets. And then we are going to add the student based on the key. So the key again is the class here of the student. So this would be for example history. And then we are going to add student to the values. So the values are actually just a list of students. And remember, we created the new list here if a key was not found. So within these brackets, that's what it's going to do. So by the time we come to this slide, we already have a list of students and we can just simply use the add method and then we can loop through that variable which is the dictionary variable we created so each key value pair so kvp we will get the key from that dictionary and its values are of course just a list of students so its value is going to be that and that these would be our group members so which students belong in each class and here what we're going to do is we're just going to print the class name because that's the key and we're just going to count to the count property of the list to print out how many students in each group. So if I run this code here, so as you can see here, we've got the math class, we have two students in there, Ali and John, and then we have the science class, Sara and Zara, and we have count here of one for Tom, because he's the only student in history. So this is a potential way of replicating what we saw with the group by and how it's working. This is not the exact way it's working, because it's a bit more complex than that, but just to give you a brief idea on how the group by could be implemented, but of course, because of the deferred execution, it will not be exactly like this. This is just to get this concept clear in how you could replicate this.